In this video we're going to create a low poly terrain using a image as a height map to displace the terrain. So first things first, just get rid of default cube. So right mouse select and delete. Next add a plane, shift A. That's our plane. Edit mode, tab. Make sure everything's selected to so A. Subdivide one, two, three, four, five, six. Exit edit mode. Next, set up a material. We can use the one that was originally assigned to the default cube, so select that material. It'll have a texture slot already assigned, so use that. Change to image or movie. We want UVs for the coordinates. And load in the image that we want, which is your height map. So that's the basic material. Next, modifiers. Click on the modifier drop down and select displace. Now displace is wanting to use the image that we just loaded and that's a texture slot. So in the texture subsection here, click the browse texture button and select text from the list. And voila, there is your basic simple low poly terrain displaced using a height map. You can control the depth of the terrain by changing strength. And as with all modifiers, once you're happy with the results, just click the apply button. Although that's the basic principle of uh, creating a low poly terrain using the height map, let's just go into edit mode. It can't be used as is because it has a lot of wasted vertices that need to be removed. And this is done using the decimate modifier. So make sure the object is selected. Click on the drop down again and this time select decimate. Now I'm going to click on display all edges object data and wireframe. This is just so that we can see what the decimate modifier is doing as it's doing its thing. Select the object. You can either left mouse click and drag the ratio button or type in a value. And as it decreases, you can see that the number of faces drops. Now you want to remove as much as you can without affecting the mesh too negatively. So you need to keep the general shapes and structures whilst removing all of those unwanted surfaces. So if you now look at the mesh now compared to what it was, all of those vertices have been removed. Granted, it's left a bit of a mess, which will need to be cleaned up. So, as with modifiers, click the apply button to make real the changes. And then clean up the mesh using the usual multi-select with the right mouse click shift. And alt M to collapse. Note also that there may be non-manifold vertices, which are these vertices that are just connected via an edge. These need to be removed as well. So by the time you're done, you should end up with something that's not too dissimilar to this. So 
This is the cleaned up version where all the surfaces, well, not all of them, but most of the surfaces, the problematic surfaces that were shown previously have been cleaned up. So here's the clean version, at least like that. Here's the original version. And we can see that there's quite a significant difference between the appearance of the surfaces. We've got something now, this is a clean version, which is much more conducive to being seen or representing a rock face or cliff face. Whereas had we left everything at default, it would actually look quite messy in game. Obviously, depending on how detailed your mesh is, will determine how long it takes you to get to this. But it's worth spending the time to do this, to make sure that you get this done. Otherwise, you may inadvertently cause problems, display problems in game because of things like smoothing, which we'll get on to next. Now, where smoothing is concerned, we don't want to do what we normally would do, which is just to simply apply it over the entire mesh. So if we select and add it, because what happens is it tends to make the mesh look all mushy. It doesn't really have any shape or form. So what we can do, select, add the modifier, edge split. Now you'll notice there that what it's done is it's created all these hard edges in some interesting places. Let's just get rid of the wireframe so that we can see this better. Now it's created these facets they're facets that are more representative of the type of structure, the type of object that this is composed of, or supposed to be composed of, which is rock and general terrain. Now, because most of the surfaces aren't edged marked, what we're relying on is the edge angle. So deselect that sharp edges and just rely on playing around with the split angle to change the way the mesh appears with respect to the sharp edges. Using a relatively low setting is, is better for this kind of surface, this kind of object, because it's more reflective of type of material that the object is supposed to be made from. And as normal, once you're happy with the results, just click the apply button. Keep in mind that if you do use the edge split modifier at this point, it will have an adverse effect on the UV map because that's yet to be done. Because the way that edge split works is that it literally does what it says on the tin. It splits the edges. So if we were to do a unwrap of this, F10, we can see that what's happened is that the UVs, let's select those, the UVs have been split in the same way that the mesh is split. This is undesirable. So what we need to do is go back into the 3D view, select all, remove doubles, reselect, and then do the UVW map, which will then give us our entire map that we need. Now we can optimize this slightly by restricting snap to pixels constraints to image bounds, select, grab and do this for all the vertices 
we can then multi-select grab and pin these press the P key a small red box will indicate that these have been pinned if we then select all and remap we have a UV map then that uses the entire or as much as the entire image space that we've got available so we go back into 3D view and as you'll see there that most of that was done in the editor rather than in the 3D view and that is your basic UVW map so once you've unwrapped the mesh you can then go back into object mode and assign the edge split modifier to get back to what was needed without affecting the UV map itself that you will now then be able to properly texture which we'll do next. As the mesh already has a material assigned to it we can use that and simply just replace the texture so make sure that material properties are okay texture properties and we need to replace this so simply scroll down to the source input box click the file button load in the texture that you want to replace it with and accept assign it to the mesh so select all toggle into the editor and assign the image and that's the texture assigned to the UV map so if we now toggle back into 3D view Alt Z and we can see the new texture now replacing the original height map this is obviously a grid at the moment but this can be anything in terms of what your terrain texture is supposed to look like and that's it a simple terrain using a height map the displacement modifier and just assigning a simple basic UV map and texture